So uh, we've been talking about loves, uh, Ruskin's love of geology, Ruskin's love of minerals. Um, uh, in a sense, you can imagine of him in the study that this would be the place he spent most of his time. Uh, this was his workshop. It was the place where the things he loved most he was surrounded by and he was working on. Uh, and one of the equivalent great loves of Ruskin's life, um, along with the minerals and geology, was the painter J.M.W. Turner. Now, Ruskin um, first came across the work of Turner uh, when he was actually just a 13-year-old uh, and he was given a book by his father's business partner, which uh, was an illustration, illustrated copy of the poem Italy. And it was the grand tour, if you like, of going around Italy. Um, but uh, it was illustrated by these beautiful drawings, which were by Turner. Uh, Ruskin was totally besotted with them, and indeed it became a family project to go off to the Alps and to Italy uh, to explore the places that Turner had painted. And that be started a lifelong obsession with Turner's painting, how Turner had become, for Ruskin, the master painter of the era uh, and the greatest uh, painter of landscape painting of all time. So Ruskin was a great collector of Turner's paintings, uh, he, he met Turner, he knew Turner, and um, uh, his father indulged him in the purchase of Turner pictures. Uh, we, the estimate for Ruskin's lifetime is that he owned, at one point or another, over 300 paintings by Turner. He didn't own them all at once. Um, he gave many of them away, and he traded others so that he could purchase new Turners. Um, Ruskin mostly collected Turner's watercolours. He only ever owned one of Turner's oil paintings. That was called uh, the, uh, a slave ship entering, it could going into a storm, throwing over the dead and dying. But uh, here at Brantwood, he was surrounded by watercolours. Uh, most of those watercolours were in Ruskin's bedroom, and we'll have a look at those in a second. But uh, he wrote about Turner, and he wrote about Turner from the study here. Uh, and amongst the pictures that he owned, and which he uh, used as an illustration for some of his teaching was uh, this painting by, um, by Turner of Koblenz. Uh, and this is not the original Turner. The original Turner was owned by Ruskin and has gone. But what Ruskin did do was to invite a number of different artists to copy the Turner painting, to study it. And, and this particular copy, if we look very closely down here, um, has a label which says Turner's Koblenz, copied at Bramwood, 1881, by J. Daughtry Druitt. So this was an artist who uh, Ruskin knew, who he taught, uh, and who um, he admired. And it's a beautiful copy of, uh, of Turner's painting. Turner wrote about, uh, sorry, Ruskin wrote about this, this particular painting in a book uh, called The Elements of Drawing. And uh, we can see some of the ways in which Ruskin used it when we look at, at uh, the drawing, the, the elements of drawing. Here uh, is a diagram under the title of On Composition. And if we look at it and we look at uh, Turner's picture, we can see straight away that what Ruskin's doing is drawing sort of lines of uh, relationship in the picture between the tower on the bridge and the boats showing this sweep or curvature uh, that brings the perspective and the eye down and how points radiate away from this central tower that becomes the main feature of the picture. And then we see other uh, uh, complementary sort of lines that run in this direction. We also see these curves coming down towards the tower and Ruskin illustrates some of those. So he's interested in that hillside and uh, here he's drawing the hillside and showing the sweep of the line down here. And then he's interested in how those shapes are echoed in the smaller parts of the picture. So here he actually explores in an abstract sort of sense, the different forms or shapes with it that go to make up the rhythm and movement of the picture and how they take also, the law of radiation, for instance, how you'd see that in a tree uh, or another object which comes where the lines come away from things. 
You could even see that, for instance, in the shape of a boat. But is this a boat or is it a leaf turned up with its stem here? Uh, and so Ruskin is inviting us to understand the rhythm of things going on in the picture and the way these rhythms interact with one another. Um, and that is, uh, for Ruskin, the law of composition is that there's no part of the picture that doesn't in some way help another part of the picture. So you can imagine Ruskin surrounded by his turners here um, with friends and, uh, and, and students coming to see him, uh, setting them down to look at some of these treasures uh, and inviting them to, uh, uh, to draw them or to paint them. Uh, and uh, indeed, the quality of some of these copies is absolutely astonishing. So let's go up to the Ruskin's bedroom and look at some of the turners that he decided were the ones he didn't want to get rid of, that he wanted not even to give away, but to have around him and which were there uh, in his final years. Right, so we've made it to Ruskin's bedroom. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about Ruskin's bedroom in other ways uh, separately, but just uh, with following our theme of Turner, this is where Ruskin had his Turner paintings um, when he was uh, uh, when he was sleeping, um, and which he could wake up to in the morning. Uh, these are not the original Turners. I'm going to say that straight away, um, but they are actually in the original frames, and you can see the frames that were made quite a large collection because you'll see these numbers at the bottom, 104, 101, 105. Um, you'll also note that these frames have little leather thongs underneath here and they have grooves at the side. And this is because there's a cabinet in the middle of the study downstairs uh, which uh, would receive these pictures. They could be slotted in. And so it was made to contain pictures uh, that couldn't be hung. Uh, obviously, uh, there was limited room in a tiny bedroom like this. But the ones that are up here now are reproductions of ones which we know were at Ruskin's uh, bedside uh, when he died in 1900. So they were the ones that probably meant the most to him. Some of them are important to Ruskin because they, for instance, like this one over here, Richmond Bridge, um, uh, were the first, that was the first turner that Ruskin owned. Uh, and therefore, obviously, it had quite an important sort of place in his uh, you know, in the things that he valued. Um, the other thing is that it's actually interesting because it's a rather early Turner. It has an early style of Turner, um, which is not perhaps the Turner that we think of when we think of the storm, uh, you know, sea, snowstorm, uh, or other of Turner's more abstract and sort of uh, tumultuous sort of paintings. Um, uh, some of the paintings are, are particular scenes that Ruskin loved, like this view of the wharf here uh, up above, or this lovely uh, pattern, uh, painting of the cliffs on the right-hand side. Um, and, uh, and, and Ruskin um, wrote about some of these paintings, critiques them, uh, and shows the way in which Turner was actually slightly distorting the landscape, but at the same time understood the nature of the, uh, of, of the way rocks you know, are eroded and, and, and shaped. Some of the pictures are ones uh, from uh, Ruskin's travels abroad. Some are local. That one over there uh, is the sands of Morecambe Bay. Uh, you can see the uh, Haitian. It's from Haitian, and you can just see the uh, mountains of the Lake District and indeed of Coniston Old Man um, in, the, in, in the distance. Uh, the other sort of paintings of Turner's that Ruskin uh, collected, and particularly in his later life, were the ones which were much altogether much more, uh, in a sense, abstract. And this is the Pass of Fido, um, uh, and is an extraordinary painting which Ruskin writes in some detail about uh, in Modern Painters. And what he's interested in is how Turner has actually uh, woven the accuracy in the, of understanding the nature of the geology of these mountains um, with what is altogether a much, much more fluid and abstract sort of uh, composition. Um, and uh, so uh, these are paintings which are much more emotional, you might say, uh, much more awe-inspiring. Uh, and uh, Turner, Ruskin uh, commissioned Turner 
for some of these, uh, indeed, for some of these paintings. Interestingly, they're alongside a little, quaint little picture in the middle here, which Ruskin always had by his bedside. And this is actually a painting by his father. His father was a sherry merchant, not um, uh, a trained artist, but it's a rather nice example of the early picturesque style of painting. And uh, shows you, in a sense, the childhood experience that Ruskin first had of art when uh, he was traveling with his father. His father would make sketches like, like this. Over here in the bedroom, you actually see a painting by Arthur Seven, Ruskin's uh, cousin's husband, uh, of Ruskin's bed and paintings by Ruskin, uh, by Turner which Ruskin had on the, uh, on the walls of the bedroom. And some of these you can identify, there's the pun of the wharf as I pointed out. Um, and uh, there's the past of Fido. Uh, and there's Koblenz actually up there with its tower uh, and so forth. And there's the painting by his father. Uh, and there's Vesuvius in the, in the distance. Also uh, in the bedroom, uh, is this magnificent um, watercolour copy by an artist called Isabella J of Turner's Peace Burial at Sea. This is one of Turner's most important paintings. Uh, it's an oil painting today, hangs in the Tate Gallery. It's extraordinary how she's managed in watercolour to capture the uh, atmosphere and beauty of Turner's oil painting. Uh, we'll talk about how Ruskin um, commissioned artists to copy and why he asked them to copy so many paintings, many of which are, are here at Bramble. Um, but, uh, but this has pride of place because it is really an extraordinary uh, copy of, of, of Turner's painting.